Amen. Yeah, we already read uh, Exodus chapter 6, verses 1 to 13, and today the title of the message is, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. So let's make a confession and let's really reconfirm our work of faith through the Matthew chapter 16, 16. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. So all of the people so who is worshiping in the church and who is worshiping through the online, let's bless each other who sit next to us. You're the one that who is inside of the God's plan. You're the one that who is inside of the God's plan. Amen. Yeah, absolutely that we are inside of the God's plan. The evidence, how we know, because God called us as the worshiper. So today the title is I am the Lord. Actually, in the Exodus, I am the Lord. This sentence is repeatedly, you know, written in this Exodus chapter 6 like four times. Why he keeps saying that I am the Lord? Why God keeps saying that I am the Lord? I am the Lord. Why? Introductions. Because God wants everyone to believe in him. And he really revealed himself. I am the Lord your God. Then I will change the question who you are. Then who am I? Okay, if God keeps saying that I am the Lord, then who we are? God always says that I am who I am. And God is the one. God is keep saying that I am the Lord, then I changed the question, then who we are, and who am I? Number one, descendants, descendants of Adam. The descendants of Adam. Genesis chapter 3. The descendants of Adam means like we have the original sins and we are caught by Satan which is talking about Genesis chapter 3. Okay, the Satan is appeared in Genesis chapter 3 and then led Adam and Eve to, you know, do not really, you know, follow the word of God. And that sin of the Adam becomes our sin. And then we become a descendants of the Adam. And then what is the next? The Nephilim, Satan has, you know, what what happened to next? Genesis chapter six through the idolatry. Satan is keep attacking every individual and then our family. And then what happened to Genesis chapter Genesis chapter eleven? All of the things turn into the disaster. And the Satan is keep attacking and deceiving every individual and in society and this world through the you know false success. So all of the descendants of Adam, everyone is in here. Genesis chapter Genesis chapter three and six and eleven. Of course, there is a types of number one. But number two, there is an offspring of women as well. Actually, Genesis chapter 3, verses 15, Christ, who is the offspring of the women. Offspring of women. God sent the Christ into this world. 
and all of the peoples that who was in the Genesis chapter three and six and eleven before God really save us. We call this one as the forgiveness of sin, like redemption and forgiveness of sin. So we are set free from the sin. Now we are set free from the sin. So what is the evidence? Jesus, he crucified on the cross and he resurrected from the death. So he let us set free from the death. And he also promised about his second coming. And then, when there is the second coming of the Jesus Christ, that time everyone will receive the judgments. And but we, but God, ha God has let us set free from the hell. So hell is not related to us. So I told you already that descendants of Adam they are belong to the Genesis chapter three six eleven, like original sin and Nephilim and disasters. But we are the ones that who are changed from. I mean, who our, we are the one that our status has been changed. So now we are not the descendants of descendants of Adam anymore. We are the descendants of the Christ. So that's why sin and then death and hell is not related to us anymore. So the descendants of Adam's level is, you know, earth level. However, the descendants of the Christ, our level is level of the heaven. And then among the offspring of women, among the descendants of the Christ, we have another types of the descendants. What is that? Descendants of the Levi. Of course, all of people in this church, we are the descendants of the Christ. But inside of, like, among the descendants of the Christ, there is a descendants of the Levi. Who is the Levi tribes? We already read Exodus chapter six. Actually, Aaron and Moses they also comes from the Levi tribes. First Peter. Chapter two, verses nine. It says that you are the chosen people, a royal priesthood, and a holy nations and God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of the darkness into His wonderful light. So actually, Christ is the high priest. So actually, the Levi. Tribes they always follow the high priest, but in here high priest means Christ. So the characteristic of the Levite tribes they always follow the high priest, but the high priest means you know Christ. So all of the peoples that who follow the Christ, we are the spiritual priests and we are the spiritual Levi. So let's look at the number one descendants of Adam. They do not really know who is the Christ. They really lose hold onto the Christ. But offspring of humans, and then what is that status? What is that state? If you're the descendants of the Christ, if everyone is inside of the Christ. If you really make a confess that Jesus is the Christ, no matter who you are, you are not related to the sin. You are not related to the death and the hell. So, offspring of the Christ means offspring of women, like descendants of the Christ, means you are the one that who stay with God. But the descendants of the Levi, what does it mean? Yeah, of course, all of the believers they become a child of God, and they are the child of God. But especially among the many tribes, Levi tribe is very like special, because Levi is Levi tribes. They are real like you know servants of God. It's mean Christ become a great master of their life. 
So descendants of the Christ. There are many peoples that who is the descendants of the Christ, but among that people, who is the descendants descendant, descendants of the Levi, who follow the high priest? It means who follow the Christ. Okay, we believe in Jesus already. To tell you accurately, like outwardly, like externally. Maybe it could be a little bit different. Maybe after we believe in Jesus Christ, we we feel like we have more conflicts than before. Because in the past we have a conflict in the world, but right now, what kind of conflict that we are facing? Because our conflict is not belong to the earth level. But the conflicts that comes from the relationship between God and us, so that's why now we are facing a conflict which is belong to the heavenly level. Of course, in the past we also got suffering as well, but the suffering that. When we receive in the past as a descendants of the Adam, and then the suffering that we are facing right now as the you know offspring of the humans, I mean, uh, descendants of the Christ is total difference. And sometimes uh, we can have some you know very great har- hardships or tribulations, but the hardship and the tribulation is inside of the world, and then the tribulation that the hardship inside of the Christ, and it's very totally difference. So sometimes, even though we believe in the Jesus Christ, sometimes we receive the, some temptation, or we receive some test, right? But you don't need to worry about it because inside of the temptation or test, there is a solution. And then through this temptation, God really wants us to really improve our vessels. And then you know, and then this is very temporary. So this is just not last long. And sometimes beyond this temptation, sometimes we are facing some great suffering and hardship. And then sometimes the answer will gonna become a little bit late. But even though answer comes, even though that answer comes late, but the bigger answer will come. And sometimes, of course, even though we believe in Jesus Christ, sometimes we are facing a great problems. Same as like you know, for example, as Stephen. In Bible, maybe we can think that oh, if we believe in the Jesus Christ, everything we're gonna be, you know, everything we're gonna be finished, and it we're gonna be a great. But why, Stephen's? Why he has to got killed from other people? Why? And we, you know, in a physical eyes, we think that oh, this is a disaster, or we think that this is just one of the hardships. But this is not just solution, but this itself, this is a solution and beyond. This is the God's great plan. So if we believe in the Jesus Christ, don't just think that oh, if we believe in the Jesus Christ, we will receive the blessing. Our level is not same as the non-believers in this world. Sometimes, even though we believe in the Jesus Christ, we facing hardships and tribulations and su- or suffering some temptation and conflicts and hardships. All of the thing, yeah, this is you know belong to God's level. So, what is the last one? Why Jesus came to this world? Because he has to crucify on the cross, and then this is the must. What Jesus must do in this world, like crucify on the cross. So every individual in our family and or our family line, we have our own cross. And then, but this cross always make us that remember. Remind of like you know this cross sometimes it seems very you know difficult for us but this cross really make us stay with God all the time. So today you have to really remember this. Uh, today the title is the I am the Lord, right? And then buddy number one, I will be your God. 
I will be your God. It means that the God of the Israels, Joshua chapter 7, verses 13, or Jeremiah chapter 3, Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 3. I'm uh, sorry, Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 3. What it says This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says Reform your ways and your actions, and I will let you live in this place. Yeah, reform your ways and your actions, and I will let you live in this place. This is what God told. You know, many people always think that it, when we heard about live from your ways and your action, we always think in a moral and ethical ways only. But actually in here means reform your ways and your action means just follow the Christ. This is the only way that we are able to reform our ways and our actions. I'm not talking about the moral and ethical stuff. Just follow the Christ. And then when you really, you know, follow the Christ, he says that I will let you live in this place. Jeremiah chapter three, uh, Jeremiah chapter seven, verses three. So in in this place, what does it mean? The land, the land of the Canaans. And then it means that if you die, you will go to the heaven. And then in this world, before you die, you will enjoy the land of the Canaan in this world. So God is the Israel, God of the Israel. And then God really acknowledged that the Israelites, they are the remnants, they are the remains one. So we are the spiritual Israel as well. So God still keep calling us as that, calling us that we are the remains one, we are the remnants. So what God really require from us? There is no any other way, but you just follow the Christ. That's it. That this is what God requested from us. And of course, and I will let you live in this place. It means the land of the Canaan. It means that if you die, you will go to the heaven for sure. But not only this, I will let you really conquer the land of the Canaan in this world. So you are able to really enjoy your daily life in this world. So number two, who is God? I will be your God. But in here, God, what does it mean? God of the salvation. Psalm chapter 54, verses 1. How God really, you know, saved us. Save me, O God, by your name. Vindicate me by your might. And then through his power, God always changed us. Why are we always suffering in this world? Why are we feel drained in this world? Because we are weak and then the sin that we are commits. That's why because of that we are powerless. That's why we are suffering. But you have to always remember the God, God of the salvation. He's the one that who saved us. And in His name, through His name, He saved us. And through His power, He changed us all the time. And then the Psalm chapter 16, 8. Psalm chapter 68. You know, it feels like we always have a burden. And then sometimes we, you know, 19 to 20, like Psalm chapter 68, 19 to 20. Like, praise be to the Lord, to God, our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. Our God is a God who saves from the sovereign. Lord comes escape from the death. So Psalm chapter 68, verses 19 to 20. You know, we always, you know, daily bears our burdens. And then, you know, in this world, we have a lots of burdens and we have a lots of troubles and problems. And, you know, that's why we need a savior who is the Christ. So we need him all the time in our life. So actually, we have to die, right? But the, our God is a God who saves from the sovereign Lord, comes escape from the death. And in Psalm chapter 68, verses 21, Surely God will crush the head of the, his enemies, the hairy crowns of those who go on in their sins. So God will crush the head of the, his enemies, the Satans. 
So our God, our God is keep calling that we are the remains one, and God always protects us, and God always, you know, guide us. What kind of God that I'm talking about right now? And if you have a time, you can read Job chapter five verses seven. Job chapter five verses seven it says that yet man is born to trouble as surely as sparks fly upward. So you know we are born to trouble. However, God is always you know the one that will really save us. And I keep calling that we are the remains one. And then you know God is the eternal gods, not God is the God is the eternal gods. So you can read Ecclesiastes chapter three verses eleven. So he has made everything very beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human's heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to the end. So he has also set eternity in the human's heart. So he's eternal gods. And number two, the God of the Moses. So. Ex Exodus chapter six verses twenty six. It was this Aaron and Moses to whom the Lord said, "Bring the Israelites out of the Egypt by their divisions." You know, God told you know Exodus chapter six verses twenty six. It was this Aaron and Moses to whom the Lord said, "Bring the Israelites out of the Egypt by their divisions." When God, you know, gave some commands to His people. He mentioned about the Aaron first, and then after that Moses, because Aaron is the older brother of the Moses. That's why it was this Aaron and Moses to whom the Lord said, "Bring the Israelites out of the Egypt by their divisions." And then God told them that you have to really, you know, stand before the Pharaoh king, and then you have to go tell Pharaoh king of the Egypt to let the Israelites go out of his country. This is what God, you know, told Moses. But when you, the, there is a very interesting things, you know, number twenty six is the physical way because Aaron is the older brother than Moses. That's why he mentioned the Aaron and Moses first. But when you look at the Exodus chapter six verses twenty seven, it says that they were the one who spoke to the Pharaoh king of the Egypt about bringing the Israelites out of the Egypt. They say Moses and Aaron. This is the spiritual level, so that's why God mentioned Moses first rather than Aaron. So actually, Moses is the shadow of the Christ, who is. You know, doing、uh, who is you know play the role as the mediator between you know Israel and God. The Moses is the shadow of the Christ, so mediator. Like Moses is the one who stand in the middle between the Israelites and then God, right? Let them to communicate each other. So. And then those people who is in the mediator and who focus about only the Lord, we call them as a pilgrim. And sometimes pilgrim, they have they don't have their family, they don't have the neighbors, and they don't have the friends. Just stay alone, and they just only focus on the Lord, and then they just go through it. We call them as a pilgrim. You know, what does it mean, the God of the Moses? What does it mean? Through the, you know, God is the one that who gave the power to the Moses that let him able to have the life of the pilgrim. Okay, the God is the God of the Moses, but at the same time, number three, God is the also God of the duel as well. Actually, God is the God of the you know conqueror, conquerors. But actually, in the beginning, you know Moses, he was very dull. Okay, let's look at the Exodus chapter six, verses ten to eleven. And and then then the Lord said to the Moses and Aaron, "Go tell Pharaoh, king of the Egypt, to let the Israelites go out of his country."
actually you know Aaron's and Moses actually you know physical eyes they are already getting old already and they are old and they are powerless but God already told them that you have to be a messenger and you have to go tell Pharaoh king of the Egypt to let the Israelites go out of his country and who is the king I mean who is the Pharaoh he was the king he was the powerful person at the time so actually God called them Moses and Aaron as the conquerors like since the beginning so God sent the Moses and Aaron to the Pharaoh king but let's look at the verses number 12 like you know except this chapter 6 verses 12 he says that if the Israelites will not listen to me why would Pharaoh listen to me since I speak with fertering lips I am dual I'm not power I don't have power enough but do you think that this is only like Moses story but it we can also find ourselves through this story actually since the beginning God already you know choose the Moses as the conquerors but he keeps saying that I speak with the fertering lips so I am dual like he keeps saying that I am dual actually God called him you know God calls you know Moses you know believer and then later on God calls him to be a conqueror if we do not believe we will be a dual persons we will be a dual man so if if you believe you are not gonna be a dual man but if you do not believe you will be a dual man you know sometimes what is the meaning of the believing in something you know many people we we many people misunderstand about the meaning of the faith like many people they oh we have to put our efforts and we have to really struggle ourselves to believe something then everyone called oh you're a good believer oh if we are holy and if we are very good person if we are doing some good deed and many people keep saying that you're a good believer we are not talking about some actions or we are not talking about some you know the way to we, we are doing but i'm not talking about the behavior but I'm not talking about something from ourself. What is the God standard that to calling that this person is a believer or not? God is looking for someone that who believe what God has promised to them, which is Exodus chapter six verses ten to eleven. God is the one that God is looking for someone that who is really believe in what He said and what He has promised. You know that because Exodus chapter six verses ten to eleven that the Lord said to the Moses, "Go tell Pharaoh king of the Egypt to let the Israelites go out of this country." So those people that who believe this, God is looking for that person. You know, God has every. You know, God has His plan for every individual and for every family and for our church as well. As today, Kimian Deccans she already prayed, right? You know, God also has a plans for the elders. I mean, church officials. Actually, when we look at ourselves, we cannot do it by ourselves. But when God preached the message to us, it means that God has promised to us and God will be the one that who will fulfill. So we have to believe that. And when we believe that, we are the believer. And then if we do not believe this truth, you know, we will become a dual man and we will keep telling and keep complaining ourselves that we are dual and we are speaking with the fertility li lips so that's why when you look at the really you know look at the through the this Moses story you have to really understand and you have to really realize when God preached when God promised when God telling something to us when we look at the just circumstance in a reality sometimes we really do not understand yeah, sometimes when we look at the realities and in some situations, some circumstances, we cannot believe. You know, when we look at the physical eyes, when we look at the Aaron and Moses, they are old and they are powerless. But how can they are able to stand before the Pharaoh king? And how can they let Pharaoh king to let the Israelites go out, go out of his country? It's impossible. It seems like impossible. Yeah, this is the level of the descendants of the Adam that I mentioned in the introductions. We keep always thinking that oh, our standard, our experience, and our thinking, and all of the things is the correct. We always think that our standard, our thinking is correct, and we just stuck on there. But God is keep telling that you just go, go tell. 
And then how I already promised that I will use you as a conqueror. When we look at the Exodus chapter 14 verses 13 to 14, You know, Moses and Israelites, they already get out of from the Egypt and now they are standing before the Red Sea. And in front, they, there is a red, red Sea. And then behind the Egyptian armies, they are following, pursuing them, right? And then right now, Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 to 14, we can see that how, Abraham, uh, how Moses is changed. Before, in the past, Moses always complaining. But right now, Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 to 14, what he said. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Who is the conqueror? Do you think that those people that who have a skill and ability? Or those people that who is outstanding? No. Those people that who believe. So God is the one that God is the God of the conquerors. But what is the meaning of the conquerors in here? Just only one. Only one qualification. Just believe and follow the God who keeps saying that he's, I am the Lord, your God. So today, conclusions. Today, you must to make a conclusions today. Okay, God keep telling us that I am your Lord, I'm your Lord God. Then who is he? Who is he? You have to know that God is the one that who planned Canaan in advance it, since when they are in Egypt. You know, Israelites, they are they become a slave in the you know Egypt for 430 years. When Israel people, they are enslaved by Egypt for 430 years there. You know, God was just keep silence. While Israel people, when they become a slave, God was keep silence. Now, which one is a difficult? Israelites, they facing a harsh labor or just God is the one that who keeps silence for 430 years. Which one is the more difficult? You know, Israel peoples, they lose hold onto the covenants and then they become a slave. But God, but God, you know, God chose the Israelites as his chosen people, right? And then how God will suffer. You know, he loved his people, but he, he is now seeing that his beloved one, they become a slavery of the Egypt for 430 years. How much God will going to suffer for 430 years? Can you imagine that? But why God keeps silence? Pass over. God wants to, God wants Israelites to remember about the Passover eternally. So that's why God let Israelites become a slave in 430 years. So just don't look at the Israelites states, just, you know, in, throw the physical eyes, but let's look at the, let's change our, you know, thinking that let's look at the God that who keeps silence for 430 years. And then through that, through his silence, let's look at the God's hidden plan. He's God's absolute sovereign power. And then not only this, not only 430 years, but God guide. You know, God let people, like God let Israelites walk in the wilderness for 40 years. And then let them have facing some limitation in the wilderness. You know, actually, the number forty in the Bible actually it this the this is the meaning of the limitation of the humans. Okay, in the beginning, God let His relatives become enslaved by Egypt for four hundred thirty years, and then after that, you know, actually the wilderness actually they can just you know walk they can 
they can you know walk the wilderness for just ten days. But why God led Israelites to walk the wilderness for forty years, and why God led them to facing a limitation? Why? This is the only thing that what God can do. I mean, this is the God's hidden plan. This is the thing that God is. God, this is the thing that only God can do. So, what does it mean? God wants to. God wants Israelites to remember about the Pentecost. Pentecost means in your entire your life, you must receive the guidance of the God only. And then, number three, the it's talking about eternity. I mean, why God let Israelites people to reach to the lands of the Canaan? Because. The lands of the Canaans. This is the God's goal and God's, you know, plan. And actually, this Canaan lands of the Canaan is talking about the in gathering, and it's talking about heaven. For Israel people, what is the meaning of the lands of the Canaan? Actually, everything. The lands of the Canaan is the everything for the Israel peoples. Genesis chapter twenty-three, verses nineteen, where Moses he died. Afterward, Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave in the field of in the land of the Canaanites, and the Moses he also died in the land of the Can. Um,、uh, I mean, you know, afterward, Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave in the field of the, you know, in the land of the Canaanites. And then actually, at that time, everyone wants to die in the land of the Canaanites, and even Isaac and Jacob. Actually, they also, you know, they, you know, their dead body is also buried in the land of the Canaan as well, same as their father and their same as their, you know, brother,、uh, the grandfather. What about the Moses? And then Joseph, and then he become a prime minister in the Egypt, right? And then let's look at, like you know. And then you know, let's imagine that when he die, how it was gonna be a, you know. And you know, he, but actually, you know, Joseph, he also was a like prime minister, right? And then he was, but. Even though before he die, he has his will, and he says that he told his servants that same as our ancestor, please,、uh, buried my dead body to the lands of the Canaanites. Actually, for the Israel people, actually the lands of the Canaan is everything to them. Actually, you know this this land of the Canaan is not just one of the lands for the Israels, but the for the Israels actually the lands of the Canaan has a very huge meaning, has a great meaning to them. So actually, it's talking about the eternity. So actually, everyone think that the heaven is the just end of our life, and we think that new heaven and new earth is the end for us. But actually, that is the new beginning, not the end. But this is the new beginning. So actually, the lens of the Canaan it is not the end, but the lens of the Canaan is the new beginning. So you must to you know look at the Jesus Christ from the incarnation to the second coming of the Jesus Christ. And you have to hold on to the promise of the lands of the Canaanites, and the Christ came to this world, and what he did, what he has done, you know, incarnations. He came to this world as a one hundred percent humans and a one hundred percent of the spirits, and before he crucified on the cross. And he go up to the Transfigurations mountains, and he was got transformed. And the first coming of the Jesus Christ, he came to this world as the most lowest positions, but you know he already sh- 
before he crucified on the cross, he already, you know, full tell to his disciple that I will ascend into the heaven, which is the highest positions. And as what he has promised, he crucified on the Jesus, he crucified on the cross, and he resurrected from the death. I mean, he died first, and after that, he resurrected from the death. Actually, during the training, I will gonna explain about this more and more. And after that, he ascended into the heaven, and he promised about the second coming of the, about the Jesus Christ. So his plan is fulfilled through the God's plan. So from the, you know, past to the future. And then those people that who believe in that, they are able to see the future and then they are able to see their past. And how we are able to see the future. If you be sure with your past and today you are able to see the future. Our past. Actually, in the past, we are in the non-believer status before. Actually, you know, we are the descendants of the Adam before. So, actually, we are deserved to be actually destroyed. But through the cross, cross of the Christ, now our status has been changed from the descendants of the Adam to descendants of the offspring of the woman. But actually, it could not be full. It could not be done through our power and in our strength but through the God's plan through God's absolute plan who is our Lord it could be you know our status can be changed actually in the past we are we our life as the you know descendants of the Adam but after that you know we become a descendants of the Levi and a descendants of the you know offspring of the woman and then we live our life as a child of God and this is our today. So if you're able to really, really understand your past and then believe your past, your today, you're able to really believe and enjoy today, of course, then you are going to see the future for sure. And we call this one as the work of the Holy Spirit. So we are not just only look at the plan of God, but we have to look at the plan of the Trinity God, and then we have to be inside of that plan. And then Trinity God, He keeps saying, "said I am the Lord," and He already revealed His plan to us already. And then who am I? And we are not descendants of the Adam anymore. But through the grace of God, we become a descendants of the offspring of the woman. It means we become a descendants of the Christ. But how much we are very thankful to this. How much you, you truly believe in this. The blessing that we can receive more is the blessing of the Levi, the descendants of the Levi. Throw the descendants of the Levi. God is the one who will fulfill the covenants that God has given to us in this age, 774 237. And to tell you the accurately, 237, God has already promised you will be a witness to the end of the earth. And it's a in Genesis chapter 1, verses 28, God has already promised to us. So he says that be fruitful and increase in numbers and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the all of the living creatures. This is what God has given to us and we just carry out what God has given to us. But how we are able to carry out this? We are not the dual man, but we are the conquerors. But before we become conquerors, what we have to believe in first, we are the remains one in this world. 
We are the remains one. That's why we have to only focus on the Lord. And then those people that who focus on the Lord, you are not the the doormans, but you are the pilgrim, and then you are the conquerors. And sometimes that's why we can have some conflicts. And sometimes we can have facing some hardships and sufferings. But this is the blessing that God has given to us. And in Job chapter five, verse seventeen, God talking about the blessing. But what kind of blessing that God is talking about? Job chapter five, verse seventeen: "Bless is the one whom God corrects, so do not dis- despise the discipline of the Almighty." Sometimes we facing our hardships and we facing some sufferings and conflicts. And some, you know, yeah, some sufferings comes from our mistakes. And sometimes we receive, we facing some hardships and suffering because of the gospel, as the persecutions. But all of the thing is the blessing. So you have to really believe that bless is the one whom God corrects. So do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. Those people that who do not believe, they will receive the judgments and the punishments. But those people that who believe, God is the one that who will give us the blessing. So you have to always remember: if you do not believe, you will receive the judgments. But if you believe, and then God will give us the blessing. This is the Lord's. So we are the remains one, and we are the pilgrim, and we are the conquerors. So we have to really believe about this truly. Let us pray, dear God. Thank you so much. We are make a confessions that our status is not comes from our strength and power, but this status is comes from uh, our God. And then please let us really enjoy and discover, and then you know our status that God has given to us. And then in every time we. Please let us see the evidence that the fulfillment of the God's covenant and the God's promise in our fields. And to just Christ, my pray, Amen.